All right, so I am um, Mary Poplin, and we are live from SIGGRAPH. We're going to be going over how to do rotoscoping inside of Mocha for After Effects. That's the free version that comes with After Effects Creative Cloud. Now, I'm going to start a program here. We're, gonna, we're just going to start a new project. So I'm going to import some footage. And the footage we're going to import is going to be this footage here, which is this girl and a gun, and it's a zoom in shot, right? Now, I don't want to roto this by hand because rotoing things by hand is kind of awful. All right, you end up having to do a lot of work. Now, we've got some black frames here at the end of the shot. I'm not going to worry about those. I'm just going to cut those off in my Mocha track. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on our layer that we want to track. We're going to go to Animation, and we're going to go to Track in Mocha AE. Now, what will happen is we will load up the shot, and it will give us options for our file. Now, we're going to track from frame range 0 to 82, and we're going to check and make sure our frame rate exactly matches that frame rate that we have over here in After Effects. So this is 24. This is definitely 24, and it's, um, it's a very small shot because I'm trying to get this done fast. What we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and hit OK because this is 24 frames per second, and everything should be correct. We're going to go ahead and we are going to roto over this. We're going to call this Mary Sig. Okay, and we're going to hit OK. And yes, we're going to overwrite this file. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to play through the shot, make sure it looks good in Mocha. Now, we're going to cut off these black frames. So, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the end of my timeline button, and I'm going to click End here. We're going to zoom in on the timeline. So, now we have this whole shot. All right, so here's the thing about Mocha and tracking in Mocha you can use Mocha to rotoscope your shots in half the time. Now you do that by cutting your keyframes down to about a third of what you would normally use. The way you do that is you use the track as your roto assistant to help you do your rotoscoping, okay? Now, that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to track from the largest areas of detail to the smallest areas of detail. That means if we have an object that's large in the frame, we focus on it, but it also means that we have an object that is not blurry. We focus on that before we focus on a blurry object. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I am going to draw a shape right around her hand and knuckles here, and we're going to get started. Now, the reason I'm drawing a shape around her hand here is because we are tracking from areas of the most detail to areas of the least detail, okay? So we're going to go ahead and track this. I'm just going to go ahead and use my X-Blind tool. Now, I use my X-Blind tool because I like to relax for curves and pull tight for corners. It's just easier to me than Bezier's. We have Bezier's. They are right here if you want to use them, but I don't like using them. So I'm going to pull tight for this corner here, and now we've got this nice, sort of fairly lovely roto shape around her hand, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom out here so you can see what's going on. And what we're going to do is we're going to track backwards. So I'm just going to track backwards through the shot. And Mocha is just going to hang on to her hand as we move through the scene. Now, the reason we care about that is because what this will do is this will drive the bulk of the motion of our, our uh, rotoscoping, and it will give us natural-looking motions. So what we're going to do is we're going to correct this. So I'm going to correct this shot here. We're just going to bring these points up. And, you know, we have this transform tool. It's new in version 3 of Mocha, and what we can do is we can use these to transform several points at a time in ways that look uh, natural and correct, right? So what we want is we want nice, smooth motion. The name of the game is smooth motion, okay? And the less keyframes you use, the more smooth motion you can get. Now, I'm going to turn the stabilize button on. This doesn't actually stabilize the shot. What it does is it focuses my spline in one area. So I can look for areas that it's the most off at, and then I correct the data. All right, so we're going to look for areas of the most, um, the most uh, diversion from our points. All right. And so from here, what we have is we basically have a nice, lovely roto shape in just a few keyframes. And it's going to look really natural, OK? So let's just zoom out. And let's turn Stabilize off. And let's turn our mat on and our overlays off. And you can see that we end up with something really nice looking, OK? Looks really even and nice. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to turn mats back off and overlays back on, and we're going to finish rotoing the shot. Now, we're going to roto multiple shapes at a time in an attempt to save ourselves uh, some, some time. So we're going to zoom to the end of the shot. We're actually going to zoom to where we can see the gun on the screen. So about right here. What we're going to do is we're going to start rotoscoping the gun. So we're going to name our layers because layer management is actually pretty important. You don't want layers named layer 10, layer 5, and layer 42. So we're going to call this um, right hand. 
We're going to lock it. We're going to turn the widget off because this is our action item. This means Mocha's tracking, and we don't want Mocha to track. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a new roto shape around our gun object. All right. So we're going to take that. We're going to call it gun. And we're going to track translation scale and rotation only on that because we don't really need the skew data. Okay. We're also going to come in here and we're going to track her forearm at the same time. So I'm going to come in here and we're going to track her forearm. And we're going to soften that shape. And we're just going to track multiple layers at the same time, and we're going to pay attention to layer order. So we're going to call this right forearm, only spelled right. Okay, and we're going to come in here, and we're also going to draw a shape around the top of her arm here. We're just going to come in here and grab this. All right, so here we go. We're going to soften that. We're going to pull that tight, fix this. Okay, and now we're going to track this back. We're going to call this right shoulder. Okay, so we're going to lift gun to the top of everything. Okay, we're going to put hand right here above everything, and we're going to track right forearm and right shoulder at the same time. All right, so let's just go ahead, track right forearm, right shoulder, put them in order, and let's go ahead and let's track backwards. Let's hit stabilize on so that we can see what our shapes are doing. All right, and let's track forwards. All right, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to look for areas of divergence. So let's look at her forearm first. We got some pretty big divergence there. So what we're going to do is we're going to just select all of that with our transform tool, and we're going to just move this down. All right, and we're going to correct this shape here. So we're going to just bring this up, move that there. All right, and we're just going to look for areas where it's the most off and correct that shape. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we're going to correct her shoulder the same way. We're going to go to the area of most divergence, and we're going to correct that. All right, and we're going to scroll through the shot. All right, so two keyframes is enough to handle that. Now the gun itself does not look like we, it looks like we got problems here on our gun track, okay? So what we're going to do instead is we're going to retrack this. So we're going to take a look at our gun layer and we're going to go ahead and we're going to track um, I think just uh, translation and scale and track that through the shot all right and we're going to do the same thing up here we're just going to track this forward from here all right so let's just correct this and then we're going to move on to the rest of the roto for the shot all right, so that looks nice and solid, all right? So for her head here, we have to make sure that we're at the beginning of the shot again, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and we're going to use our X-Blind tool again. And we're just going to make some nice shapes right around her head and ears and jawline. Now, you notice how I'm splitting her up in different pieces. I'm splitting her up in uh, ways that are kind of like paper doll-like. Okay, I'm doing that on purpose. You want to make sure when you are um, that when you are tracking um, when you are tracking objects and, and rotoing them in Mocha, you want to make sure that for people particularly and other complex shapes that you split them up in a planar way. So you want to split them up in a way that makes sense. And what we're going to do is we're going to track backwards from here. We're going to do translation, scale, and rotation. We're going to call this head tra um, head roto. And what we're going to do is we are going to track backwards from there. We're going to lock the gun layer, and we're just going to go ahead and do this. We're actually going to link um, two layers together here. We're going to go ahead and tie her neck into this. And we're going to use her head track to drive the neck roto, okay? So how that's going to work is just like this. We're going to call this neck roto. And we're going to link neck roto to the head track. Right, so now we're going to move the head under, we're going to move the neck under, okay? And the reason we're moving these to the bottom of the layer pile is because Mocha holds everything at the top of the layer pile out from everything beneath it. So while we track her head, her arm and her hand are going to be held out from her head, okay? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to 
zoom out. We're going to click on our head. We're going to turn stabilize on, and we're going to track backwards. And what's going to happen is both these roto shapes are going to follow that track. So we end up with something that looks really nice, okay? Now, obviously, it's still a little off. So what we're going to do is the same thing that we've been doing through this whole shot. We're just going to correct our shape. And we just keep correcting our shapes until we are done. So I'm just going to bring these in here. Bring that in there. All right. That looks pretty good. Okay, so from here, we're just going to check and see where stuff moves off kilter. So that looks pretty good. Now her neck is a little off, so we're going to correct that. And you can see with not a lot of keyframes, we are getting a lot of really nice roto, okay? So this is why when I say that Mocha can cut your roto time in half, this is what I mean. I mean Mocha literally cuts your roto time in half. And the reason it cuts your roto time in half is because we cut down the amount of keyframes that you normally use. So let's just go ahead and scroll through that. Looks pretty nice. All right, so let's let's go ahead and try to finish rotoing this as much as possible. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the front end of the shot here. We're gonna come in here. What we're gonna do is we are going to draw a shape around her torso here. And you'll notice I'm trying to follow the folds of her cloth. Now, normally I tell people not to track and roto at the same time, but for this shot, we're making an exception. And the reason we're making an exception, okay, is because What's going on here is that there's not a whole lot of outline change um, in this shot, but if there was a lot of outline change, what we would do is we would definitely make sure that we um, that we tracked first and then did our roto, okay? But it's not necessary for this. So we're gonna come in here and we are going to adjust this. All right. And we're going to adjust this. All right, and fix that. And now we're gonna go ahead and let this track backwards, but actually I think what we're gonna do first as well is we're also going to track her bottom half at the same time. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna call this torso. Okay, and I'm gonna call this uh, legs here. All right, so we're gonna just come in here. And we're going to make some nice roto shapes. Well, that cut my shape off. So now, um, because I just had that shape cut off, I'm actually gonna use my add um, points to X-Blind tool, tool to finish my roto shape. So the difference between tracking and rotoscoping in Mocha is if you want to track, you still use a shape layer, but when you're rotoscoping, you might not wanna use the same shape layer you track with. That's all. Um, they, both, they both track, okay? Um, you're still using splines, but the issue is, and what we're trying to do, is we're trying to use our splines to dictate the tracking data, but in this case, we're also using the splines as roto. So in this case, they are indistinguishable. Okay, but if we are, but if we were doing a normal tracking, we would use a normal spline to track, and then we would hook roto up to that. Okay, but we're doing it this way because the outline is not changing very much. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to fix this right quick. We're just going to adjust this shape because I want my roto to be nice and crisp looking. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and track these both backwards. So we're gonna tr call this pants, call that torso. We're gonna drag them under everything as well. We're gonna lock our head and neck roto. Okay, and we're going to track these backwards. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit track. And because I have stabilize on, it's not zooming anymore. It's just showing me what we're tracking. So you can sort of see really nicely what's off where when we, uh, when we use the stabilize tool. I always use the stabilize tool when I roto. It makes my life much easier. So now when I come in here, all I have to do is again, adjust my points very, very quickly. And you can see how like, you know, if you had to roto this by hand, you would end up taking a long time. But you know, we don't wanna take a long time. We don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do this as fast as possible because we've got shots to get out the door, right? All right, so that looks pretty good. So from here, we're just gonna scroll through all right, that looks really nice. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna track this back arm and hand, okay? And we're gonna do that very quickly. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to use my X-spline. I'm gonna draw a spline around her shoulder here. All right, and we're just gonna come in here like this. I'm just gonna invent her arm shape. 
We're going to soften that because it really does need to be softened to fit with her curves. We're going to call this left shoulder. Okay, only again spelled right. And we are going to drag this under everything. The reason we're dragging this under is again, like I said, Mocha holds all of these top layers out from the tracks beneath them, so you never have to worry about having holdout layers. All right. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we are going to draw a shape around this part of their arm. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw around her knuckles and her fingers. All right. All right, so we're going to just come in here and we are going to select all of these shapes and we're going to soften them all. And then we're going to pull this one corner in tight here and adjust that finger. And then we're going to get, use this add to X spline tool. Now we're doing this to cut out the middle part of her fingers here. So we're just going to cut this out right here. All right, so now when I turn my mat on, you can see I have that cut out. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to call this left hand and we're going to drag this all the way under everything. Okay? And then both of these we're going to track at the same time. So her left shoulder I'm actually not going to track shear on and her left hand I am. Okay, the reason I'm not tracking shear on her left shoulder is it's not really necessary. There's not a whole lot going on there. But her hand, in case she moves a little bit, I want to grab that angle. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to hit stabilize and track backwards from there. And just like everything else, we're just going to correct it where it goes off and we're going to fix it from there. So we're going to get to the end of the shot. All right. We're going to zoom in. All right, and what we're using is we're actually using the free version of Mocha that comes with After Effects Creative Cloud. All right, so you have this if you have if you have After Effects Creative Cloud, if you have After Effects CS4, CS5, CS5.5, or CS6, you have this tool. So make sure you take advantage of it. There's no reason to do Roto by hand if you don't want to, okay? Now, some people love to do Roto by hand. I am not one of those people, all right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and finish correcting that, finish correcting this. We're going to zoom out, and we're going to see what that looks like. What I want to do, actually, is I want to take these points here, and I want to bump them in just a little bit. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's our roto. It's going to be very fast. Now, what do we do with this? Okay, well, what we want to do is we want to take this out of Mocha. So I'm going to lock all of these. I'm going to save it. Okay, saving your work is important. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to export this. So we're going to go to export shape data, okay? So we go to export shape data down here. Now, um, we're using the free version that comes with Mocha for After Effects. So the only thing we can export to is Mocha for After Effects. So we just go do all visible layers, Mocha shape data for After Effects. We go to copy the clipboard. We jump back over to our After Effects file, okay? We make sure we are on the first frame of our shot. This is very, very, very important. If you are not on the first frame of your clip and you paste your data into After Effects, you're going to be off by however many frames you are off in your paste. So we're going to go to Edit, and we're just going to go to Paste. Well, did we not copy it to the clipboard? Edit, Paste. Okay, and what that does is that brings everything in as an effect. Okay, so these are all my shapes in as an effect. Now, if we want to bring them in as a spline, we can do that. What we would do is we would come in here, and we would go to click on this layer, we go to edit, we'd go to paste mocha mask. You want to paste in as an effect um, if you want to have your edge feathering respected, and you want to paste in as a spline if you want a lightweight spline to use. So that is how you use mocha for After Effects. It's the free version that comes with Adobe After Effects Creative Cloud and how you do rotoscoping very quickly. We rotated that whole shot in about 15 minutes. I am Mary Poplin. We are live from SIGGRAPH. Thanks very much for your time. If you have any questions, please ask Daryl or Ross or me. And if you want to know more about Mocha, we have some lovely pamphlets, and please take a pen. Thanks so much. I'm Mary Poplin, live from SIGGRAPH 2013.